across the APIs, Salesforce Tooling API. It's an introduction to automated developer control of Salesforce. Welcome to another session of Across the APIs. We've been diving in through the myriad of different APIs available in Salesforce. Today, we're jumping into the Tooling API. Now, this is a really fun one because we can actually automate a lot of the things that we're doing as developers and configurators, and we can automate that through the API. So we can actually run anonymous code, check debug logs, and even create code and fields. It is really powerful. So today is an introduction to being able to automate Salesforce development through the tooling API. I like to start by showing you the documentation and let you see where you can find your own details about these things. And if you go to the Salesforce Docs APIs and we drop down, you can find one on the tooling API right here. So here is the tooling API and it talks about when to use it. Source code control, continuous integration, Apex classes. You can pretty much do what you do as a developer you can be doing through this API. Now there is the metadata API, but that is used for massive, you know, bulk loading of metadata from org A, let's say, to org B. But the tooling API allows you to interact with a single org and allows you to make changes and do actions that you might be doing as a developer. And the, the really the power of this is you can actually script and automate these things. And so I'm gonna show you through the API how we can control Salesforce from a developer perspective. So we authenticate first through a standard REST API, and then now we're hitting the tooling. You'll see the version number V59 tooling. And it's really neat because you can hit the endpoint and it'll show you the available endpoints, run it, test asynchronous, access, query. This is another way to query S objects. Jobs, completion, catch, search, composite. You can send in multiple requests at the same time with the composite. These are some elements I may be covering in subsequent sessions. But let's go and take a look at a simple one we could do, which is we're gonna take a look at running a test class. So here I am in an org, my typical test org, and you'll see I could select the tests and look at change password controller tests and I could trigger a run. And what this will do is this is me um, triggering a, a unit test to be fired. Now I could be taking a look at this by going to the developer console and you'll see that I have this test run right here, which passed. So this was just run right there. So it takes a, the human to get me involved to come in here and trigger the test class. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go and do that through the API. So through this API, I have run test asynchronous, and this is a post statement, and the body could be a comma separated list of the class names. In this case, I'm just gonna be sending a single class, change password controller test, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna see the action of this in my developer console. So here's my developer console. It has a single test having just been run. And you can see it right here in the bottom part of my screen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna trigger another instance of the test class execution. So I fire that off and now you can see it running. So just like that through my API, I was able to fire this off and run my test class execution here. This could be a way in which you can script or automate either through the, your own scripting or any other tools, the execution of running test classes. So that is a nice little thing you can do right there and automate. Now, if I'm doing some testing and I wanna see my debug logs, here's a simple little hello world class that I had done for a previous session. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it and get a debug log. So now I have a, this debug log that was just executed and I wanna get access to that debug log. And I wanna do that in an automated fashion. 
So what I can do is I can go to query the debug log. So here it is. I can actually go to the tooling API and run a query statement. So you could be querying objects and even some of the hidden objects in Salesforce. And here I'm querying the um, Apex log. So this is executing a query. And now I get to see two different records of the Apex log. And what I can do then is grab this statement for the ID and then go to the next one where I can actually, this is doing a get statement um, and it's on S objects, Apex log. You, I'm gonna put in the log ID and then body and hit send. And now I have access to the debug logs. So that's really powerful. I now have the ability to have code execution debug logs. I can have code that can query for them and pull them out and, and download them, view them or send them on. So this is a way for automated viewing of your debug logs, which I think is a really powerful thing you can do. Now, then we have something really even, even more amazing. We have execute, we have the ability to do an execute anonymous statement. And so this means I can do the same if I were in my debug logs and I go debug execute anonymous and I were to want to run this code, I can run this code from outside of Salesforce in an anonymous context. Now you need to encode this. So what we're going to do is encode. So what we're gonna do, we'll just get a little encoder. I can take the Apex command I want, Steve test hello world. I can paste it here and I can encode it. And what this is gonna do is, the, the point is you need to execute this in the anonymous body URL. And here you can see that it has Steve hello world and that it is encoded the command line statement. So this right here is my ability to take a command and execute it. And so now I have, it was compiled, it was success, there were no problems, and this has now been run. So this is my ability to then run. Now what I probably can do, now this allows you this to execute anonymous code, that could even run anonymous code or execute pre-deployed classes. So this could be a way in which you can then execute code from outside of Salesforce. So this could be, this could replace your need to create a custom web service that could execute. The key is this can then execute with some elevated permissions using the tooling API if you needed to do some uh, modifications. So this is a very powerful mechanism to then be able to execute anonymous. So these are just a few of the things that you can do with the tooling API. So I hope this was helpful. This is just an introduction to show that what you do as a developer can actually be automated. You can run tests, you could even inject code, run anonymous, pull down your debug logs. So you can be automating a lot of the activities that you have to do yourself. And I know this is encapsulated in a lot of the dev tools, the deployment tools, the dev tools themselves, but knowing that a programmer can tap into this, script and automate this is a great power that you have. So I hope this was really interesting and I may dive deeper in subsequent sessions. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining Automated Development. Join me again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe, YouTube, Steve TechArk and www.stevetechark.com. Have a great day.